This is the Scythia rant. Anything that you hear in this Scythia rant has no ill intent or is not paid for or distributed by the topic makers. It is just clearly my opinion and nothing else. Plus, plus no clips, audio, video from the topic interviews or shows in question in any rant is being used in the rant. And also, this rant is for mature audiences only. Your discretion is advised. Guess who's back? Back again. After about, I don't know, about two months, I'm back. And it's time for a rant. About what? Well, high definition hullabaloo and why flame wars are just so plain stupid. It's time to put some cold water in time to end the wars. This is the return of Scythia Rants. And it starts right up with title music. Yeah, that's right. Music. Thanks, YouTube. Yes, it's been a while since I've done anything on camera. Code Equestria pretty much went in the dark for about, about two months as I was, well, doing what gamers truly do, play video games for a living. And I was too busy thinking of ideas to do videos enough to stop my own procrastinating ass from actually doing one. So I thought I'd get off the schneid before schneid of doing video videos before Code, Code Equestria became became as cold cold as the story of Hearts Warming Eve and everybody died of video hunger from me. So what's the point of me coming back? Well. The point is, finally, for me to address something that has been annoying the living hell out of me. Especially in these last six months. Fanboyism, again, is the topic. You could say this is a sequel episode, just like the last Scythia rant, the fanboyism a hate story. Because apparently none of you have learned the lesson of that video, my dear equestrians. That fanboyism sucks. And now the flame wars have become so out of control, so insane, and over what? Not only console and brand loyalty, but now we're talking frame rates and whether something is in 720 or 1080p. For those that are not into video game news like I am, here's the skinny. Call of Duty Ghost on the next gen consoles. Consoles, that mean the Xbox One nah, and the PlayStation 4, both have different resolutions of high definition. The Xbox One runs at 60 frames a second, but only at 720p it's being upscaled, while the PlayStation 4 runs at a cool crisp 1080p. This is causing people on the opposite ends of the flame war that is next generation console bullshit 
to take up arms in defense of their respective consoles without using their brains and realizing that both consoles in terms of the hardware anyway, are practically identical. The reason for this, as said by, by Infinity Ward's Mark Rubin, is that the 60 frames a second time frame was more important than the higher resolution. And, and in order to reach that 60 frames a second, we had to sacrifice things for the smoothness of our game. Yes, we have upscaled our game, unquote, but it just runs better on 720p. Of course, I'm paraphrasing here. But, long, long story short, Mark Rubin said that the Xbox One right now isn't capable of 1080p graphics. Well, at least for his game and for Dead Rising 3, that's going to be running at the same at the same 720p, but only running at 30 frames a second. There have been rumors that Rise also runs on this graphic capability. So what does this prove that Xbox's hardware is not up to snuff compared to the S4? No. What this proves is the Xbox One has a lot of growing pains. That developers aren't necessarily having problems, it's just a lot to take in. Remember, they're talking about a supercomputer here. And no, yes, I did say supercomputer. See, the Xbox One isn't a gaming console, kiddos. In fact, I said that way back, back in another Scythia rant, that the Xbox One isn't a gaming console, and people really shouldn't take it that way. It's just not built as a gaming machine. Also, to back up the point, point some Microsoft games, mainly Killer Instinct and Forza run at a smooth 60 frames at 1080p. So it's really up to each developer that are making the hardware where to ultimately decide what it should run at. But this grants to a greater problem. Is people's hatred or decision making on consoles gotten so bad that we can't even praise another console for what it has? As granted, the console war idea has been running since the days of Nintendo and Sega, but quite frankly, I am sick of it. As gamers, we should learn to appreciate whatever companies are out there, whether it be Steam, Steam with their new Steam machines and OS, to PlayStation 4, to Xbox One, to yes, even the fledgling Wii U. We should not be so close-minded and idiotic to shut ourselves off from what the competition is offering just because it might be, might be just $100 more expensive or not driven towards our gamer base. Newsflash hardcore gamers, the casual runs this market, and the casual use their, use their consoles more for entertainment apps and other things than just games. Why? Because they have lives, stupid. It really shows, it really shows the ignorance of our of our gaming culture, if we're ignorant, ignorant to deny people options, wouldn't wouldn't you wouldn't you hate to going to let's say a dating site like eHarmony and only being able to choose from white fine girls rather than an assortment of several different kinds of ten dimes for you to choose from?
You mean to tell me you rather have a limited selection of only Asian chicks rather than the full compliment, compliment of nice looking dime bristles that, that are spreaded over all dating sites? See, that's what I don't get about the anti-Xbox One argument in general. People are saying that the console, for having the myitude of options that it does, and the many things that you can do on it, is a necessarily a bad thing, seeing that the console has no central focus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 360 has no central focus ever, and for the last eight years, it's been been practically the number two console in the last console cycle. Why? Because the options allow people to put it into their home and and not feeling that they're using a three hundred to two hundred dollar paperweight. You see, options are a good thing. Yes, we can be gamers, but eventually we need options. Just like we do in the rest of the world. world. Yes, PlayStation 4 is more gamer focused and more powerful. And if you like that sort of thing, I'm not trying to take that from you. But please do not go on message boards or GameSpot, where I have a new blog, by the way. By the way, and, and please do not entertain yourselves in arguments over... Xbox Live or PSN on what console is better based on short-sighted loyalty and ignorance. See, all you guys are doing is making is making the people that built this respectable guys like myself look stupid. You see, people in my day and age and not to sound like an old hag, but Back in my old day, we used to have two or three different consoles in the same house. By rival competitors. Hell, we used to go to the late blockbuster video and rent the rival console for 50 bucks only to play with it for two days and only have two games. You see, there was a time where it was okay to have an Xbox Love Xbox and a PlayStation making sweet, sweet love to the same TV screen. It's not such a bad idea to be, dare I say, open-minded. Support your console of choice, yes, but don't be angry and ignorant and close-minded to the competition. For it is the competition that keeps the video game industry Healthy. What? Would you rather the video game industry become like the first person shooter industry? Where there's only one real game at the top and everybody's fighting to get to get to that top but seemingly can't because of their own limitations? Or would you rather have an NBA Live to 2K comparison where there's healthy and genuine competition. Competition and options are a good thing. Because competition and options are what makes this country a republic. If there are no options, then we are a dictatorship. And then we're taking our words that we use on message boards and promoting a dictatorship in the video game industry. Don't be a dictator. Be a George Washington. Find peace in your own nirvana. See you next time.